now from Sushuda's point of view, because it is a surgical textbook, the diseases could be classified into two categories as surgical and non-surgical. And in the surgical conditions, non-surgical treatment like sneha dikriya, any of the other non-interventional treatment is not contraindicated. Whereas if there is a possibility of any non-surgical treatment, surgery should not be done. And this is the major identity factor of Ayurvedic surgery. Whenever there is a question like what is Ayurvedic surgery and how that Ayurvedic surgery is different from the contemporary surgery, the one major point of answer would be this, that there is a conservative approach. Now, to highlight about that, the development of surgical discipline in Ayurveda is something unique. And it's a gradual evolution of the intervention in the physiology. See, after all, the disease occurs due to vitiation of the doshas and the doshas have to be corrected. To correct that, the options which are available as the treatment are Sharira dosha prakopeto, Khalu Sharira meva ashitya, Prayasha trividham oshadam ichandi, Antaparimarjanam bahi parimarjanam shastra pranidharam jeti, Tatra Antaparimarjanam yadanta sharira manupravish oshadam aharajata vyadhin pramasti, Yet Puraha Bahis Persham Ashitya Abhyanga Sweda Pradeha Parisheka Unmartana Dihi Amyan Pramasita Bahi Parimarjanam. Antat Parimarjana is a administration of some medicines into the body so that it just is a slightly different from the food and it affects the it changes the constitution of the doshas in such a way that it can become normal and the Bahi Parimarjana is a when it's applied over the surface of the body or it could be like the shodhana chikitsa where the doshas are removed from the body by a, a non-specific intervention like omana virachana where the doshas are supposed to be is a non a not directly intervention but a minimum intervention with the, the uh, puro karma the doshas are brought to the core part of the body and they are expelled out now when these are not sufficient then to remove the doshas, so the first is under parimarjana is a correct, correction of the dosha defect by itself. Bahi parimarjana is a removal of the doshas with minimal intervention. When this is not possible, then only the shastra pranidhana. Shastra pranidhana is actually one slightly extension of the, the shodhana chikitsa where the doshas are removed along with the dhatu, see, along with the tissues. Either it is excised with shastra pranidhana, punaha. Chedana Bhedana Vedana Dharana Vekana Upatana Prachana Sivanayashana Kshara Loka Sarshteti where directly the dosha are removed so there is one level of intervention higher. So the important is the evolution of the surgical discipline is a perfect blend of medical and surgical discipline. There is not much of a difference. But the discipline of surgery was again because it was considered to be a more specialized job it was limited to a few of the specialized personnel and Saraka had considered them as a dhanvantariyaha dhanvantariyaha like sushuddha sampradaya so whenever there is a need for certain intervention where the medical treatment fails then the patient would be referred to the dhanvantariyaha surgical discipline and hence the important is uh, surgical discipline and medical discipline was in a perfect blend in Ayurvedic stream and that is uh, one of the identity of Ayurveda. Whereas and this way even in the surgery there is a sequential interventional steps and that sequential interventional steps are Raktabhisravana is slightly a modification of the Shodhana where without the Puro Karma the Dosha is removed from the blood directly. Then comes the Bhedana and the Vedana where the fluid which is collected as a result of the disease is either drained out with a big, bigger incision or through a smaller opening drained out. So draining out that vitiated component of the body along with certain amount of the tissue is a, another step, the next level of the intervention. If this also is not possible or if there is a need otherwise, then the tissue is removed with a pathological part of the body either by chedana or the lekana, either it's excised or curated out. So the primarily that evolution of the surgery from a shodhana where you give the puro karma and then the doshas are expelled out, then comes the bloodletting where the doshas are expelled out without that puro karma along with the blood 
and then the Veda and Vedana where the accumulated uh, uh, pathological entities are expelled out and children of the Lekhana where along with the tissue the lesion is uh, removed. Now in addition to supporting to these surgical interventions the Asian is a diagnostic intervention. Primarily, it is to locate the area where the surgery has to be done or where the uh, stenia is located, it is searching for that. Or Aharana is a removal of uh, that foreign body. Of course, the Sivana is a, a supplementary where the wound has to be sutured. So, this way, that evolution of surgical discipline in Ayurveda is a very uh, scientific method and very gradual method. In comparison to this, in the Western surgery, if you look at the history of Western surgery, the surgery was, history of surgery is very uh, odd there in the Western surgery. Uh, initially, the surgery was not part of the medicine. Surgery was limited to either certain barbers or it could be the other uh, the philosophers like or maybe something like religious purposes and the surgery was considered to be a a treatment for the process. So, it will see the history of surgery is uh, in the Roman Empire. Uh, the history of surgery is a patient who otherwise cannot be treated. He would be kept in an amphitheater, and in amphitheater, people would throw the stones on him, and uh, the people would be just clapping and enjoying that blood splitting up from the body. And that's why the surgical, uh, even now, the surgical room is named as a operation theater. So, word theater is for the dramatics, but primarily and basically surgery is not a drama and to name that uh, room where the surgery is done as a theater is a misnomenclator, but still that continues. So, initially it was a theatrics and a best surgeon would have been, uh, would be identified by more blood stains on his body. So, that was the very end. The medical and surgical discipline were totally different. There was no combination. And later, as the gradual evolution, the evolution of surgery in Western uh, history comes somewhere in 1368, where a barber surgeon's guild was formed, and the same later on was converted into Royal College of Surgeons in 1843. Till that period, the surgery and medicine were not at all. Uh, uh, these uh, related to surgery was totally considered as a crude and barbaric even in the English literature the word barbaric is suggestive of cruelty and uh, the severity but uh, in 1843 onwards there was a discussion to merge these together and the uh, in uh, 1817 uh, sir, 1911, uh, when there was a discussion in British Parliament about this merging surgery and uh, the uh, medicine, Lord Thoreau, who was a medical specialist, one of the parliamentarian, he stated there is no more science in surgery than butchery. So, this is how the surgery had developed in the Western country, but only after that, the surgery was actually included in the medical discipline and then it gradually evolved and of course now you do not have that kind of a comment on that surgery and medicines they are now in collaboration with each other but many times surgery now in the present day situation has overtaken medicine and the surgery has now reached to every organ of the body and now we have come to a situation where even the contemporary scientists contemporary medicine specialists they are looking for an alternative to a bad surgery and a need for surgical conservatism is a, one of the issues because now I will not go into the other part like uh, the surgery, how, how it has developed and so on. So, of course, it has developed, it has benefited. I am not denying that part. So, when I say this, I am not denying that part. But now it has developed and benefited of people. Now it is going to that level where lots of unnecessary surgeries are being done. And uh, this is what they, I am just quoting from authentic sources where this data is known in uh, USA 2.4 million unnecessary operations are performed at the cost of dollar 3.9 billion and about 11,900 patients have died from unneeded operations. This is from authentic times, uh, authentic sources as well. And it's not only in uh, USA, everywhere there is a, 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 a need for a conservative. There is a general public notion that most of the surgeries being done 
now are unnecessary and they can be avoided. Now this is from India, reports from India, again as such. You will have plenty of scientific articles also which suggest about these uh, uh, unnecessary surgeries. And uh, now that interventional and non-interventional fight has started in the Western surgical discipline very significantly in the cardiology area and in other areas also it is gradually developing and there is a future would be there is a need for conservative view on surgery and at that time the importance of Ayurvedic philosophy, Ayurvedic surgery would be known. So from Ayurvedic surgeon point of view it is quite important to maintain that identity of the conservative surgery and not to be overtaken by the speed and then awe of the contemporary surgery as such. I will stop at that level for that discussion. Then further continue on that. Asmin Punash Shastra Sarvatantra Samanya Sarvesham Yadhinam Yathasthulam Varodha Kriyate Pragadhitam Dukhasin Yogaha Vyadheha Iti Now in because Shanya Tantra is a discipline which involves all the other disciplines is a Sarvatantra Samanya a point which you have discussed in detail in the first chapter because all of the diseases are involved, the classification of the disease and description of the diseases would be of all the other diseases. And again, a point which we have discussed earlier, the Dukhasanyogahvyadaya, definition of Vyadhi or disease in Ayurveda is anything which produces discomfort is a disease. So, a Vyadhi, Vyadhi doesn't require a physical involvement. But from the contemporary science point of view, the issue is a bit wider or there is a lot of uh, 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 these confusing issues. To name a condition as a disease, as per the standard definition, a condition of the living animal or plant body or one of, on, of one of its parts that impairs normal functioning and is typically manifested by distinguishing signs and symptoms. Only when there is a typical signs and symptom and when there is an evidence of a physical involvement, that condition can be called as a disease. So if you have developed headache during the class, that headache during the class may not be considered as a disease from contemporary point of view, whereas it can be a vyadhi from ayurvedic point of view. So when it's a vyadhi, there is a need for intervention. To have the other alternative issues, there is a, a other additional words like disorder, syndromes, these are all the words which make you more confused many times like than otherwise. Instead of considering any person, anyone who has a discomfort as a disease, which is a really a practicable option, in the contemporary sense we have all these issues like disease, evidence based uh, uh, this disease, then disorders where you have a lesser grade of evidence, syndromes where the evidences are there but they cannot be still considered as disease because you have a group of symptoms which consistently occur together. And of course, when it comes to the question of definition of health, it's just copying of what Ayurveda would say, like where the mental and social well-being and also is included as a part of the health. So there is a lot of confusing issues. Compared to that, Ayurvedic definition of Vyati is a simpler, more practicable, and we need to stick on to that and then highlight the value of that kind of a definition. Now, classification of the diseases according to Ayurveda would be based upon Adhyatmika, Adhibhautika, Adhidevika. Out of this, Adhyatmika, Satyavidaha, Adhibala Pravartaha, Janmabala Pravartaha, Doshabala Pravartaha, these are the Adhyatmika, Sanghatakala Pravartaha, Adhibhautika, and then Kalabala Pravartaha, Devabala Pravartaha, Sobhavala Pravartaha are Adhi Daivika. Adhyatmika is uh, something which is related to the body constitution as the body develops from the birth point of view or the, from the time of Shukrasakshonita Sanyama, from the time of fertilization as the body develops. That is the Adhyatmika. Adhi Bhautika is related to the external environment. Adhi Daivika is uh, something which is related to the nature, the outside as such. Now Adhi Bala Pravutaha the Adibala Pravrta are produced due to genetic abnormalities which are produced uh, are generated. The disease is generated 
at the time of the fertilization itself, the seeds of the disease are there, which we now consider as a genetic. Now, of course, we classify them into phenotypic and genotypic. Phenotypic, where there will be a clinical presentation of the disease, genotypic, where the clinical presentation may not be there, and then you have that dominant and recessive genes which are identified. Whereas, from ironic point of view, the classification would be matrajaha, putrajaha, whether it is uh, from the maternal side or paternal side. Dominant and recessive characters and their variations are not really described in Ayurveda, but they are understood. Then the other controversy is about Kusta Arshas. Now, as per the present day uh, knowledge, Kusta again doesn't mean only leprosy. Kusta is any of the skin disorder. And uh, the if at all it's translated as leprosy, to consider leprosy as a, a genetic pathology or something related to the previous birth and so on may not be. A acceptable noun and uh, maybe in due course of time you may find that. So as far as the genetic diseases are concerned, the knowledge about that or uh, information about the genetic pathologies, they are just gradually evolving. A few years back diabetes was not con considered as a genetic disease but now it is considered as a genetic disease and so on. So lots of diseases are included into the genetic uh, category. Now, because you get more and more information of the genetics assets. So that's one of the area where it's evolving. And maybe one or other day, we may come to a situation where majority of the diseases could be related to the genes asset. And genetic engineering could be one of the major treatment uh, option in due course of time. Of course, that's in about the future. But at present, genetics is a very rapidly evolving branch and uh, lots of uh, options of the treatment. And, uh, a, a huge amount of information about the other diseases which were not considered as genetic earlier, they are coming out. Then, Janmavala Pravartaha Yetu Matu Apar Yetu Matu Apacharata Pangu Jatyanda Badhira Mukha Menmina Vama Prabhupada Jayande Pepi Dvivdhaha Rasakutaha Dohuta Apachara Kutascha. Now, diseases which are congenital, which are produced at the time of the birth, and which may not be genetic but may have been acquired during the intrauterine life. A disease which is generated during the intrauterine life, we may now name as congenital, though it's not a perfect translation, but uh, the idea of a disease evolving in the intrauterine life due to some abnormalities which have occurred during the nourishment of the fetus, and the nourishment of the fetus could be affected due to Either Rasakrataha due to malnourishment of the mother or Dauhruta Pacharjaha. Now, Dauhruta is a unique concept of Ayurveda where emotional factors of the mother affecting the child is also known. Now, till very recently, in the contemporary science, this factor was not at all considered and it was considered to be something like superstition. But now, very recently, this factor also is now being considered. So, mental well being of the mother. Uh, being and supportive to the fetal growth. That's one of the important factors which is now gaining lots of importance in the contemporary science and very recently. Whereas Ayurveda has been explained that 5000 years back. Then Doshibala Prabhupada Eto Atamka Samutpan Aham Ityahara Achara Pratashta Tevi Dvidaha Amasya Samutthaha Papasya Samutthashta Punaha Dvidaha Shagiraha Manasashta Tayete Adhyatmidaha Doshibala Prabhupada Ara the diseases which are produced due to your behavioral food, the activity, lifestyle factors, and they could be of either kapaja or vataja as or pittaja, amasya samuthaha, papasya samuthaha, giving more importance to kapha and pitta in amasya samuthaha and papasya samuthaha is about the vata, or they could be even categorized as shari raha manasaha, physical and mental. Then sanghata bala pravutaha. Ye Agandavaha Durba Se Balavigrahata, Balbadigrahata, Tevi Dvidaha, Shastagraha, Vyarakrasha. These are traumatic. The Sangata Balapurata are traumatic and the trauma could be either due to injury with some weapons or due to wild animals in those days. Now, of course, road accidents would be considered as number one than the weapons. So a trauma could be a factor for the disease, and they are considered as adhibodhikaha, which are preventable, which can be prevented and uh, uh, they are not predetermined they, and hence as such and uh, they, uh, the vishesha of the doshas, our uh, kriyakalas, 
they may not be applicable to be a sangas bala pravarta because the disease can occur due to the trauma and hence the shasti vipakta is ivara shat kriya kalas they may not be applicable once there is an injury then immediately the dosha vishesha starts and you may not have that sanchaya and prakopa stage it may be directly sana sanchaya at that stage then kalabala pravarta the diseases which are produced due to seasonal variations which could be shitosh navarsha vata varsha tapa prabhriti bihi nimittaha te bi dudaha vyapanna dudaha avyapanna dudaha the factors related to the season uh, either cold or heat or maybe the rain or so on and which could be either due to the normal seasons like raining in rainy season and that excess of rain may produce the disease or avyapanna dudaha when uh, sorry vyapanna dudaha when doesn't rain in the rainy season are avyapanais the train in the rainy season itself could be a cause for the disease so environmental factors being a cause for the disease now this is again another of the evolving branch earlier the diseases uh, the importance of the environment in the disease was not really understood properly in the western medicine but now is one of the very important area and lots of importance is given to the environment and environmental uh, factors and of course this is uh, something which is um, very now focus is in the main focus as such daiva bala pravarta another is daiva bala pravarta where deva droha abhishekta ha pratagana krita ha upasarga dasha te bi dvida ha vidya dashini krita ha pishaka bi krita dasha punasya dvida ha samsarga dasha akasmi dasha now this is a unique factor of ayurvedic philosophy where there is a factor which is beyond the human level something superhuman factors which can produce the diseases this is what uh, i rather would say and uh, daiva is doesn't really mean only god it could be any of the factors other than the human being and it could be produced due to deva droha due to improper following of the rules of life deva doesn't mean god who is just uh, worshiped in the temple the god represents the rules of life or a normal healthy rules of life if they are not followed or abhishekta kaha it could be like cursed by somebody else now whether a curse really produces uh, a disease or not these are all controversial issues now in the present day situation people may not believe you may not have believe us but that superhuman beings or the superhuman organisms producing the diseases they now we consider them as infective diseases infective diseases which could be epidemic or endemic they are con- I mean, under the category of daiva pravarta now what sushuna has said the categories of these could be vidya dashini krita ha pishacha krita ashta pishacha are the microorganisms which are not visible to the naked eye which have a tendency to hurt the living tissue they are the pishacha uh, pishikam asti asti iti pishacha which eats the flesh in pishacha so you are literally term like pishacha something like uh, a death and then after the life after the death that's not really the issue the exact meaning of pishacha is something which eats the raw flesh so there could be some human beings also who could be pishacha who eat the raw flesh as it uh, anyway so that that's the one and it could be samsarga jaha akasmika cha they may produce the samsarga they may produce infection of course we samsarga and that factor we have already discussed in the previous discussions in the chapters like related to that either it could be like the micro microbiology of ayurveda is a one factor which we have discussed in the previous chapters and during that period we have discussed this issue a organism may affect the body a with intention or akasmika accidentally it could produce so you may have epidemics and endemics that kind of categories are the daiva bala pravarta vyadi daiva bala pravarta doesn't mean only something auspicious related to god and so on swabhav bala pravarta ek shut pipasa jara mrutyu nidra prabhadeha tepi vividaha kalajaha kalajashta tatra parirakshana krutaha kalajaha aparirakshana krutaha kalajaha swabhav bala pravarta are the naturally occurring diseases like Uh, due to give hunger physical activities uh, aging or uh, uh, sleep etc which if they are not done properly they can result in the diseases 
and they again are put categorized into two kalaja and akalaja kalaja are even after following all the normal standard rules followed to do or standard factors of the lifestyle according to this age and all the other factors like chitu your appetite whenever you feel hungry you take food and that even after you take that normal food intake if there is a disease related to that then it's a prerakshana krita if you are not following the rules and then there is a disease is a aparirakshana krita so aparirakshana krita and aparirakshana krita are a natural disease can occur even if you are following all that swadacharas the swastha vrutas swastha vrutas are supposed to prevently or reduce the possibility of swabhavala pravrutta vyadhi but swabhavala pravrutta vyadhi cannot be completely avoided it cannot be completely removed because is nature nature of the living being once there is uh, a life is born the death also is predetermined so uh, that's uh, indian uh, indian philosophy so mrutyu is already predetermined and hence there is always a deterioration that deterioration can be slowed down by following the rules that's sadachara and swastavrata and even after doing that when the disease occurs that's kalaja if that sadachara is not followed then the disease occurs it's a akaraja yete adidevega atra sarva vyakhi avarodha any of the diseases can be classified under these heads so this classification of the disease is again one of the major issues now also in the contemporary science and the classification of the diseases now is based upon either topographic or like by the body or region or system anatomic by organ or tissue physiological by function or effect pathological by the nature of the disease process etiological causes juristic by speed of advent of death and epidemiological statistical the last factor is about the statistical where you categorize the disease as either epidemic endemic and so on so current classification is based upon these factors but because the classification is confusing and then the, the issues now are related to global there is one major uh, factor which is uh, considered as international classification of the disease or icd which is a hot debate now and uh, which is very popular now the icd is defined as uh, actually a statistical combining together of the data the whole aim of the icd is uh, just to accumulate the data about the disease and avoid the possibility of uh, the differences in the language so all them are coded it's based primarily a digitalizing or coding of the diseases as such so is a classifying of the disease injuries cause of death as such and who publishes that icd is to standardize the method and uh, the icd history it starts with the 1937 where there is a statistical analysis of the causes of the death was organized and now of course gradually that icd is have developed uh, and uh, many versions have developed and from Uh, ICD 1 to ICD 10 in 1993, ICD 11 is uh, implemented from 25/5 2019. So there is a need to be aware of what we need consider as ICD and why and so some basics of the ICD is necessary now because uh, in due course of time the ICD coding may become mandatory. Even now uh, you will see in the case sheets, particularly those who, who there is a claim from the uh, these uh, insurance companies they are asking for the icd coding of the disease so a brief i am not i am not able to go into the full detail of that icd coding but i am trying to give you the gist of that icd coding how it is done and all that whatever i am just relating is uh, about the icd 11 the latest so previous versions will just not bother about that the basic idea of icd is coding is uh, the uh, these diseases are classified into the different the etiological factors topographical factors and so on and they are categorized as a infectious and parasitic diseases and they are coded as a to b uh, infections of bacterial origin are a non bacterial are b neoplasm c and d and uh, diseases of the blood and blood forming organs to certain disorders involving the immune mechanism d again where d52 again d89 that i'll come to that what do you mean by number so anyway so up to about the uh, letters of q now these classifications are coding are done the q is about congenital malformations deformations etc so the whenever you write a code 
the first letter would be suggesting about that the bad alphabet letter and that alphabet letter is about uh, this uh, uh, category of the disease. Now, in each of these subcategories, subcategor uh, there will be subcategory of the complications and subcategory of the complications are given by the numbers like two digits or four digits like when I this uh, Q00 to 99, different 99 varieties of the congenital malformations affecting the system, they are included and they are noted in the second and third position. If there is a further categorization, need of further categorization, they are based upon the anatomical entity or the anatomical site or the severity, then the further three or four are mentioned. And there is a classical method, uh, you have a full stop here, and if there is an extension, there has to be apostrophe over here. So that's about how the coding is done. It's purely a computer language. Now, to make it very simplified, and I will give some other two or three examples of how the coding is done. Type 5, a infective disorder from the contemporary point of view. And the salmonella organisms are categorized as A01. Salmonella is 01. So a typhoid without any complications where you have identified A01 and no complications and hence zero. Suppose the typhoid has patient has typhoid meningitis, then is in the list of that coding, meningitis is uh, given the number one. So A01.1 suggests of meningitis. Suppose the patient had a typhoid arthritis, A01.4. So you have 99 categories of those in complications. That's how typhoid with arthritis would be A01 point or dot 4. Now, I will give another example. If we say diabetes mellitus, diabetes mellitus in the uh, 11, that ICD code 11 is categorized endocrine disorder. ICD 10, it was metabolic disorder. So the coding will be different in ICD 10 and ICD 11. In ICD 11, because it's endocrine, you will have E as the first letter. And there is a nutritional and metabolic factors uh, which are producing the disease and hence that 11. The next numeric code would be 11. Then you have the full stop. Of course, I have put a uh, bar wrong aspect. It should be a full stop and dot. And then because suppose a patient has only a di diabetes and no other complications, the coding would be 11. Suppose the patient had gangrene, the gangrene would be having a coding of 52. 52 numeric code. Now, that gangrene produced due to peripheral vascular disorder, the numeric code would be 170. So, a diabetic gangrene with the atherosclerosis, your coding would be E1152. A patient with a simple gang a diabetes, E11. A patient with a diabetic gangrene alone and atherosclerosis is not made out, then E1152. So, this way you write that. Now, suppose the patient had a gangrene without the diabetes mellitus and there is a disease of circulatory system, ha patient has a cardiac pathology and hence the peripheral gangrene has occurred, then disease of circulatory system would be I and gangrene is 50 and peripheral vascular disorder if the patient has that I 50 to 170. Now the patient in a 235 who has that gangrene without a diabetes mellitus, her coding would be I 50 to 170. Whereas the patient with the, uh, that diabetes 243 and has a gangrene, the coding would be 1150 to 170. So this is how you can, the coding is done based upon that. Another example of that coding, suppose if there is an external injury, external injury is categorized as B and 89, where there is a trauma from outside, the same numeric code. All these numeric codes are available in the internet, in the system and the WHO sponsor the system, you get that once you put the name, that external injury, you get that B code. And then if it is due to a vehicle accident and the person who is injured is not driver, it's a 2. If the person injured is a driver of the vehicle, then it's a 1. Then type of the vehicle, suppose you know or unknown, suppose if it's an unknown, then you will have a categorization a X. And the cause of how that injury has occurred. If it is known, then again you will have subcategories. If there is not known, then a, a, another X. And suppose a patient is brought to the casualty and the patient's condition is not assessed as still uh, the patient who is in category, it is a casualty, the uh, accident trauma, you will be, and if you do not know the intent, the uh, exact type of the vehicle, then the uh, coding will be V89 2XX. 
Suppose you know about the type of the vehicle, then you will have either B or C depending upon whether it is a transport vehicle or a public vehicle, private vehicle or a uh, public vehicle. And then of course you have subcategorization like uh, trains, flights and so on. Then if the cost is known, like if there is a, a head-on injury, head-on collision or the other way, sliding or accident due to the other factors, then again the coding would be changing. Like, and once you have assessed, suppose you have assessed and then patient has a fracture of the femur, then S72, S suggests you of the involvement of the bone and 72, the fracture of the femur. Suppose the patient has a fracture of the femur plus fracture of the colis fracture, suppose in a accident it can occur, then the coding will change into S72 plus 52 instead of the A, A where it is not assessed, suppose after the examination, this way the ICD coding is a maintained and it is a digital coding asset and the whole purpose of the digital coding is a, to give a universality to the identification of the disease asset. Now, and uh, very interestingly, in uh, 11 uh, ICD coding, there is a chapter for traditional medicine also and a separate uh, supplementary chapter is added and uh, the real rationality of that coding is very difficult to make out. I couldn't really make out that rationality. But interestingly, there is another issue which uh, every Ayurvedic practitioner should know. Our Ayush department has uh, started with a separate coding and a portal has been started. So those who do not know about that, so look at this. The URL of the coding is a NAMSTP Ayush government in and then index that. And in that coding, it's a, uh, I don't think that this coding is really based upon what the universal ICD coding is that. And, uh, uh, this was uh, launched in, two, in uh, 2017 and there is a even some demand that every hospital should adopt this coding but this coding is uh, uh, not really serving the purpose of that universal ICD coding. Uh, there is a lot of issues there and the whole issue of coding that method of coding is uh, uh, I would say I don't know how which of the word I should use but this is a screenshot of that the coding asset where the uh, every word of Ayurveda is given some coding A, 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 A1 and at the end it's not really evaluated. So instead of that, suppose instead of going to these processes, I would recommend make use of the basic concept of the Adhibhotika Adhyatmika Vyadis and then the subcategories of Sattavira Vyadis and then the Yatha Doshena Dushtena Yatha Anusarpada, that concepts are added Definitely, we can have a definite, a obvious, useful digital coding, which may not be serving the purpose of that international coding. But as far as planning of periodic treatment, a coding is a possible. So uh, there is a need to uh, think on this line, and probably in due course of time, we may come out with that kind of a concept instead of the what we are presenting. So my purpose of showing this or discussing this issue is not to criticize or any way but to make you aware of the situation which is there and maybe at times you may get uh, a compulsion to follow that coding of Irish system also that's possible so at that time we have to give a very clear picture to the authorities and we have to clarify those issues from that point of view this discussion is uh, presented now uh, continuing that so instead of waiting is uh, wasting more time on those issues which are away from the Samhita issue but still a factor which we have to know. Uh, let me continue further. Sarvesham te vyadhi nam vata pita shleshmana hai avamulam talingat vata drishta palak vata agamacha for all the diseases it is primarily vata pita kapa. That's what I said like uh, classification would be adhibhuti ka first level, second level the uh, sakta vidha then comes the vata pita kapa. And then there, the how the disease is presented. Right? Now, telling that the because the proof of that vata pitta involvement is because of their uh, lakshanas, signs being seen, and their effects of treatment is seen, and then the text. So the three supportive factors. Etahi Krishna Mikaratam Vishurupena Vastam Sapurajastaman Sinavetri Chede, Yamiya Krishna Mikaratam Vishurupena Vastam. There are no diseases which cannot involve the Vata doshas, Vata Pitta Kapha doshas. So, three doshas are involved in every disease. 
and the social system gives it to the simile to that of the environment where you have the three factors the sun, moon, and the wind, or a uh, cool, heat, cold, heat, and the wind, which are the major factors which determine about the situation in the environment. Doshadhatmana samsadhata ayatan visheshat nimitta dashesham vikalpaha. Their permutation and combinations would occur due to the environment of the dosha dhatmala and based upon this environment of the dosha dhatu, they are named as rasa joyam, shoni joyam, mams joyam, medha joyam, asti joyam, majja joyam, shukra joyam. Now we may have more com these permutation combinations. Rasa ja, vata ja, rasa ja, pitta ja, rasa ja, kapha ja. Again, there again, you may have again the categories, the dhanga ja and so on. So the, at the end, you may become innumerable diseases. Now, the clinical symptoms in gross about the Rasaja Vikara and Rakta Vikara and so on, Dhatu Vajnava are Anna Ashtadha Arojaka Avipaka Angamadha Jvara Hrilasa Tripti Gaurava Hrith Pandu Roga Marga Uparodha Kashya Vairasya Angasadaha Kalaga Vali Parisa Darshara Prabhataya Rasadoshya Vikara The Rasadoshya Vikara are, it could be related to the appetite uh, uh, this uh, anorexia or uh, dyspepsia or so on, the, uh, or indigestion, then it could be the pain in the body, it could be the salivation, it could be loss of appetite, and it could be heaviness, it could be involvement of uh, heart or the vicious, uh, this panduroga, anemic uh, conditions, or there could be an obstruction to the passage of the vata, and a vata avarodha could occur, and uh, it could also be the season of uh, and these uh, degenerating, uh, degenerating diseases like Kala Jabani Parikaha, uh, aging, aging disease also could be considered as a solution. Similarly, Raktaja, Kusta Visar Pupira, Mashaka, Nili Kakila Kalak, etc. Lo local eruptions with the maybe pus forming or non pus forming, inflammatory or non inflammatory swellings, which are localized, they are primarily considered as a Raktaja. Are the Mamsya are Adhimam Sarbudarsha, Adhijiha, Upakusha, Shundika, where there is a localized, non tender, soft mass produced, they are considered as Mamsudarsha. And the Medoja are again localized swellings which are huge in size and may have contents which are not that of the same, like, like a cystic condition or where there could be some uh, fluid or maybe something which is not that of the Normal condition doesn't look like normal tissue, heterogenic tissues connections with the localized feelings. Granti Vitradi Galaganda Arbuda Medo Javusta Prokopa Madhumeha. Then in addition to that, Madhumeha Stavuja Ati Sweda Prabhazaya. The uh, Pramehas, different varieties of Prameha, there again Madhumeha. Madhumeha is enriched cell renal failure, it's not only the diabetes. Then Ati Stavuja, obesity, these are the Medo Yoshira. Adjusti Danta Asti. Adhidanta Asitoda Ashula Kunaka Prabhadeha related to the heart tissues of the body, bone as well as the teeth. They are the Asitoshida. Madhya Doshida, Tamodoshan, Mucha, Brahma, Stula Mula, Stula Mula, Aruhu, Janma, Aruhu, Janma, Aruhu, Janma, Neta Vishan, the Prabhadeha, Madhya Doshida. Madhya Doshida are related to the maintenance of the consciousness and homeostasis, and hence the patients who tend to have giddiness and so on, they could be considered as Madhya Doshida. Then uh, Shukra Dosha is related to the genital system, Klaibya, Aprahasha, Shukra Ashmari, Shukra Meha, Shukra Dosha Vyasha, related to the genital system, impairment of the genital functions. Tak Dosha, Sango, Ati Pravurti, Ayatha Pravurti, Malayatan Dosha, the diseases of the skin and the nexus or lesser uh, discharges could be the related to the Malayatan, like Sweda or the Mala acid. Indriyana, Aprahurti, Ayatha Pravurti, Indriyana, Ayatan Dosha. The malfunctioning of the sensory organs are, are considered as a, the diseases of the organs, sensory organ situations, the visible entities like eyes, ears, and so on. Samasutta Bistaram Nimitanti Esham Pratiroga Kshamha. More details of that will be let, discussed later on. Bhavati Chatra Kupitana Hidoshanam Shrire Paridavadam Etra Sangha Khavi Gunyat Vyadihi Tatvapadayate. The vitiated doshas as they move around, once they get uh, blocked somewhere, that the disease would occur and there is a predisposition that Khavaigunya is a predisposition for the disease. This is a factor which we have discussed during the Shatkriya Kala. A vitiated dosha may result in a disease or may not result in a disease. 
then comes the question like there could be vitiation of doshas but still some may develop the disease some may not develop the disease and this is a very important discussion in ayurveda bhuyotra jignasya kim vatadinam jaradinam ta nitya samsesha parichya udeva iti yadi nitya samsesha syat tarish nitya puraah sarve eva praninah syo athapi anyata vatadinam jaradinam ta anyatra vartamananam anyatra lingam na bhavati iti krutva yaduchyate vatadeya jaradinam mulan iti उत्पत्ति Now, how the disease? Doshas are present throughout the body. Doshas are always moving around continuously, and why the disease would not occur every time? Whether there is a constant relation between the doshas and the diseases. So, translation of the dosha as a defect in English by that famous translator uh, is absolutely wrong because it cannot be. Like doshas are not defects; they are the physiological entities in the body, but they can produce the disease. due to some accidental factors when there is a imbalance between the potency of the body and the capacity of the body demands of the body now from the contemporary science point of view this is categorized the how the disease could be produced due to abnormalities of the homeostasis balancing mechanism there is a, a basic theory of balancing of potential and demands potential is capacity of the body to tolerate that possible variations so the body is in a dynamic continuous dynamic equilibrium and when that dynamic equilibrium has a better potential to tolerate any minute variations this will not result in the disease and this is demand regular con- constant demands of the body to maintain that if it is lesser than the potential this will remain as a healthy and the person would not have the disease suppose a person has a lesser potential even if the demands are normal so that homeostatic balance which we know may use the word like immune mechanisms and so on immunity is lesser even if there is no precipitating factor or this demands of the body or the external uh, stress is the same still the person can be diseased if the potentials are reduced suppose the potentials are lesser and the demands are also are lesser even if a person has a lesser immunity if the demands are lesser so if you regulate the body in such a way that it doesn't really result in a disease you maintain that balance still health is possible so this is the dynamic definition of health and disease as per the present day situation now disease again is not simply related to the human single being uh, the disease has to have the factors three factors put together a patient's illness and the health professionals uh, who are involved in that and social sickness these three factors patient's status and how a physician would look at it how the society assess it will decide what we call as a disease burden a a, 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 a patient a certain sort of the disease may be considered as a heavy disease burden in some society and in some other society it may not in the olden days people had a better tolerance to the disease and a person who had some minor illness might not just be better than whereas now for each and every disease a patient will get admitted in the hospital and demand for iv fluid so what we call as disease burden also is considered by or variable by the perception of the people so that's another factor which makes the total idea of the disease something different now Uh, again uh, we will not waste much time on that issue but it's a one of the issue of interest in the contemporary medicine now concluding vikara parimanam cha sankhyam te esham pratak pratak vistarena uttare tantre sarva bhadam cha vakshate more details of these uh, diseases diseases burden and that classification are discussed in future uh, chapters in sushuta it is sushuta samhita am sutra sthane vyadhi samuddeshiyo nama chaturvimsha adhyaya hasamari i very classification of surgical and medical diseases based on real time clinical needs and uh, they are more scientific than what we consider now classification and coding of the diseases and ivy parameters is practicable and possible it can be developed based upon what the samhita should say study of dosha dhat involvement in diseases is key to clinical approach with this let me conclude today